All right, guys, so we're going to do something a little bit different today where I'm going to, on top of the short videos I do of just stocks that I'm looking at and the really long live stream that I do every Sunday at noon Eastern, so come back to the channel, check that out. I'm also just going to do a quick kind of video wrap up midweek, talk about some of the charts I'm interested in, try to keep it, you know, somewhere between that hour long that I force some people to watch and the minute long that uh, the other videos are feedback comments, description below, YouTube, all of that, uh, let me know. So let's just get right into it. So first thing, let's just go over some crypto. Uh, I was watching MINA USD here. And essentially, what I'm looking at here is this level, call it, you know, four bucks, give or take 450 support here, support here, and maybe support here, right? So I've highlighted this in gray as just an important area to watch. So if we can kind of bounce off that, I have a little note here to watch over five. Again, what uh, my website is, which is in the link in the description below, what Stats Edge Pro is, is essentially me doing this research every single night and uploading the charts like this. So if this is something that interests you, uh, certainly come check it out. Uh, give it a shot. It's about two bucks a day and there's absolutely no commitment um, monthly. So MINA is interesting to me. I, you know, you can't talk crypto without going after the big guy. Uh, so first, you know, full disclosure, I am short. I basically shorted from a break of this trend line kind of right in this area. Um, but I'm going to try not to talk my book. But the reason that I shorted is you see this resistance area that I drew. We've broken out of that and failed back down twice now. So if I was long this, that would start to worry me. We're now under that area. Uh, so what we need to do to really get going is this 5,800. So, you know, I've got a very tight stop on this. It's just a trade. Don't hate me, Bitcoin people. I'm not saying this thing's worthless, but I trade everything. So if it's there, I'm going to trade it. Speaking of trading everything, let's take a look at USDN. Um, which is another idea that I have here about this bull flag that's been going on here for a while with USDN. Again, I've talked about this in the Stats Edge Pro and we broke out, but that was quickly reversed today. And now we're kind of kissing the underside of that, uh, that flag. So for me, I'm just going to watch this and say, hey, if we can hold above that, I actually did buy some kind of in this area, a little bit lower, but nothing to write home about. If we can hold that, great. If not, then, you know, it's probably something going on there and it's time to exit. And then let's also look at CAD. So, you know, these are leftover notes from, again, the blog posts that I do each and every night uh, for these guys. But we have some support here and support here. And that was acting as support here. So I bought some at 124. But what I'm wondering is, you know, we technically have a low like this thing. If we go back, right, we've been in a downtrend for the longest time, right? Canadian dollar is getting stronger and stronger and stronger as the US is getting weaker. Uh, however, we have a low here and then a potential higher low right here. So if this can kind of clear this 127 area, that's gonna be super interesting to me just because, um, you know, that would technically mean that we have a higher low and a higher high, which would be the first kind of sign of a change in trend of this. So that's something I am keeping an eye on. So let's get right into stocks now. So if you're interested in anything that you see me use here, uh, again, links are in the description below. Essentially, I use TrendSpider for kind of my advanced charting as well as crypto and FX. And then I use trade ideas for everything else. Uh, you know, trade ideas is the one that I generally send trade through and, and run algorithms and all of this. But uh, didn't pick the best day to start doing this because if we zoom in here on the daily chart on the SPY, and let's actually just close some things down. Let's focus on the charts right now. Let's actually get rid of that guy and and even that guy and even this guy. Right, right at charts. So here on the SPY, you can see we just have a little inside day. So we broke out of this range after this 5% pullback. You remember on Twitter, everyone was saying that was the end, Evergrande and all of that. 
broke that, didn't look back. The pullback kind of didn't even get close to retesting that area. And now we're bouncing back up. So we failed to make new highs, new closing highs yesterday, but this 470 seems to be resistant. So this inside day, which you know we have 20 minutes left in the session, so it may or may not close like this, but right now this inside day is just showing me that everybody's kind of waiting. Um, so I think obviously you're going to want to bet in the direction of the underlying trend. But after these inside days, whatever happens is going to kind of be explosive. So, you know, it's not the day today to do anything, but it might be the day tomorrow to watch to do something. Uh, for me as a trend trader, I'm going to keep in mind that trend trade. Um, RSP, I just wanted to point this out. So RSP is an equal weight version of the SPY. So long story short, I'll try to explain this quickly. I know some people have seen it before, but the S&P 500 is what they call cap weighted, which basically just means that the larger the company, the larger um, you know, uh, part of the component the SPY is. So if the big guys are moving and everyone else is crashing, the SPY could still move higher, basically, whereas the RSP is an equal weighted version of that. So as an equal weighted version of that, you can see that it's relatively weak compared to the SPY today. So SPY is a nice inside day. This one's pulling back a little bit more. I don't think it's anything to go crazy about, but it is definitely something to notice that that is occurring. So I think it's happening just because Apple is very, very strong today, finally breaking out of this long base it's been putting in forever. So I think Apple's kind of holding up a bit of the rest of the market here. So speaking of that, if we look at the MDY, which is our mid caps, about the same kind of look, but the main chart I want to talk about today is this IWM. Uh, there's people out there who will tell you, you know, the market needs to correct. It's been a crazy bull run all year. Uh, I would argue that those people are dramatically incorrect because the IWM, which you can see here, is done nothing all year. And this is, you know, 2,000 of the smallest cap stocks out there, but it represents a large percentage of the tradable universe. And we have done nothing all year. We finally broke out and everyone got super excited about it. But ever since that breakout, we've seen some relative weakness in the IWM. So the levels to watch, in my opinion, are, you know, uh, 235. Right. If we break under and hold under 235, we're back into this range. That doesn't mean I think it's the end of the world or anything, but maybe we go and retest the lower end of the, end of the range. I certainly hope not. Uh, you know, I as a trend trader, when things are in ranges like this, it makes life way, way harder. So on the upside, I'm looking at 240, which is just this little consolidation of a few candles kind of right in here. If we can break 240, push higher, then I think that this was just a breakout retest and then go. That's going to be best case scenario for the bulls and incredibly healthy to retest an area that you broke out of. But those are the areas that I'm watching. Uh, the only other thing that I kind of wanted to point out quickly is the XLF. When the XLF broke out of this range, it spent quite a bit of time putting in what kind of looked like a constructive uh, bull flag to push higher. It's still technically doing that. However, you know, this is actually looking a little bit more tenuous. So we're testing the low end of that bull flag. So I want to see a financial move and I want to see the move higher. Uh, one stock I'll talk about is something that I am in that I picked up a little bit ago and then picked up some more today is this SSNC where we have this kind of big rounded bottom going on here and then this nice tight bull flag going on right here. So I'm kind of buying this hoping for a break of that which would be a break into new highs and that should be good overall for some uh, good profits. Hopefully earnings out of the way nothing really is a short float in this because it's a bank. That's why this to me and, or it's not a bank, but it's in the financial area. But that's to me why it's important to look at both this and the XLF, because if they both move together, that will obviously be good for something that makes financial software. Uh, if you know either the software industry or the financial industry pull back, that might be a little poor. So about 10 minutes, um, let me know what you think. 
I like doing these things. I've already done the work anyway, so it's just compiling it for you guys. As always, this plus whatever I'm watching going into the next day, plus many, many more charts are part of Stats Edge Pro. So if you're interested in this kind of content, but not in video form, you just wanna look through the charts with the annotations. Again, links in the description below, come check me out.